this would be happening a bit no matter what what the price is and and so we've recently been observing there are strong competing central bank and sovereign sized physical buyers ready to step in and capitalize on synthetic discounts which is the only thing providing any form of discipline to the non-delivery comex pricing mechanism ultimately paper prices are as we've said convertible into physical through this efp mechanism that's i can't underscore it enough that is their back door that is their achilles heel then they can't they cut you cannot remove that exchange mechanism that's amazing andy and i'm sure you just brought up the uh indian gold and i'm i'm positive that indian gold is not paper that they're moving this is actual physical uh gold going around there now andrew here's a a question i'm positive as you were talking there i thought the entire community would be say, would be thinking about this question maybe you can help answer it but once the casino moves to ring and then register where do you see the prices of gold and silver moving to what are you seeing out there yeah, great question, Shane. And, and, and this has been a question we've been deliberated with a wide range of liquidity providers, some more bullish than others. But once the double down naked short squeeze is triggered, structurally, most liquidity providers consider that this spec driven short squeeze uh, will continue until it hits around the March 22 um, uh, levels of around 2,078. I mean, that's sort of the consensus number was around 2,000 to 2,080. So, um, so the, which is actually the, the rationale for it. It's the point where the house turned around and rinsed the specs at the other end of their naked long positions before uh, GC, the gold futures. Uh, so, so basically, uh, so we'll see a rally probably into the into that pivot point before we see the house uh, then starting to rinse the specs of their naked longs again. However, a lot of damage has been done since then. And before gold futures, uh, then gold futures will likely revert into a buy the dip stance, uh, which is when the specs we're wrong at both ends will go naked long and be set up, of course, for the COT rinse back to around, probably everyone figures, probably come back to around 2000 to the equilibrium point. But in the meantime, it doesn't matter what the price, <laughs> because if you can exchange this gold for not only as a safe haven, obviously, regardless of the price, whichever way you look at it is undervalued by, by every metric you can possibly imagine, but never mind. But if you can st still um, leverage this gold for oil trade which you can and you're only limited by the amount of gold you can actually take delivery of then obviously this is not the same game anymore they've blown it and through this entire two-way process it's giving a window for the hugely bullish for gold to oil trade uh, currently being driven by way of an unprecedented in um, unprecedented increase in gold smuggling and the development of a physically backed BRICS currency basket, which we have outlined before. And we'll get, next time, we'll actually look closer at that. But there's some information coming out about you see Saudi now possibly joining the, the, the basket. It, 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 there's some stuff going on, but <laughs> you can't ignore this stuff. It, it, it from every, this is the enveloping horn that Gatter talk about. And understandably, gold and especially silver investors are getting very, very, very frustrated in the meantime with the blatant counterintuitive capping of what should be a natural flow of safe haven investment demand into gold and silver that should evidence both gold and silver rising in these conditions uh, into the back of a strong fits, um, safe, driven safe haven global demand, which we are seeing outside of the casino. Now, if, you, if it was not for the officially run Comex Casino, this would be happening a bit, no matter what the, what the price is. And, and so we've recently been observing there are strong competing central bank and sovereign sized physical buyers ready to step in and capitalize on synthetic discounts, which is the only thing providing any form of discipline to the non-delivery COMEX pricing mechanism. Ultimately, paper prices are, as we've said, convertible into physical through this EFP mechanism. That's, I can't underscore it enough. That is their back door. That is their Achilles heel. Then they can't, they can't, you cannot 
remove that exchange mechanism or the markets collapse. This is an unwanted competing physical demand that is forcing commercials exposed to the physical markets to buy back futures to hedge this physical exposure, which is they're on both sides of the market. And they damn well know that these if you can't channel it into DLG, LD, and everyone wants to puke up their GLD positions, where the hell do you put it? It ends up as uh, unless you can unless they can cover it, cover, use it to cover, which a large portion of it is used to cover their positions and to actually take another uh, long position against the specs, which is exponentially even larger than what we're seeing on the on the COMEX, then obviously, you know, you have to bear all this stuff in mind. I guess the bottom line of this, I guess the question is, though, just how long can this divergent action continue? So I think for the answer, we must take off the US centric blinkers designed to block captive, captive COMEX participants from taking the much larger 360 view to which every other participant is telegraphing fair value prices that are significantly higher than currently on offer in the non-delivery world of the COMEX casino. By design, the global view is hidden from my myopic COMEX participants. We talked about it, huh? we talked about five minute halts being instigated in the COMEX and yet the same actors being able to trade simultaneously while the COMEX is frozen in the over-the-counter markets. This is a setup. It's a rigged setup. Yet under the US centric radar, a large unleveraged move into physical gold from all, all other participants is underway. And this includes the same market making banks operating as official agents in the COMEX marketplace. They're also loading up on physical based on these massive divergent prices. They are acting for the officials, but it's the officials taking the load. These two big to fail banks are not they are going along their books. The fresh move into physical gold is driven by the largest central bank move into gold since Nixon closed the gold window in 1971. And these reported foreign central banks, banks and sovereigns are moving to diversify their reserves away from the dollar and in doing so have effectively reopened the gold convertibility window by competitively moving against each other to load up on a gold price that is hundreds of dollars below where they perceive it to be worth against the dollar. So yet published data only reflects the volumes that must be reported, which although um, way short of reflecting the real picture, already evidences the largest move by competing central banks into gold since 1971. And that's just, as I say, what is reported. China and Russia are the elephants inside the synthetic price setting room. However, the emerging market, uh, the emerging market central banks have now moved in to become some of the largest buyers of gold. Also, lagging reports of strong Indian wholesale demand are continue to leach out all the time. And of course, that doesn't reflect what we just discussed, the 30 tons of smuggled per month gold that has tripled since the World Gold Council estimated it. And none None of this data captures monetary gold escaping the reported mechanisms, nor are direct imports from foreign owned mines reported, all of which contributes to tightening supply in the current dilutive non-delivery price. And it's the offer to sell real physical that is rising, and it is the attack on paper gold that is draining the necessary liquidity to suck in enough spec supply to offset the move for alchemists to convert paper gold to physical sub 1800. It shouldn't be below 1800. And the currently deeply backwardated silver price to boot. So look, given the size of the move into physical and with physical gold priced synthetically at the margin, each ounce removed from the COMEX price setting mechanism weakens the official mechanism to further control the gold, gold pricing. Now, what we're witnessing is an unprecedented move to secure lock-in diluted paper centric comex prices convert these ounces into physical gold ounces and silver of course through this efp and over-the-counter spot index gold and silver positions